Hello everyone, welcome to Uncivil Law. This is just a really quick message, so I'm videoing it from my phone. First, an announcement. I am doing a stream at four o'clock today on the Betsy DeVos Title IX um, issue with higher education. So there are head higher education courts that exist to determine issues relating to sexual assault issues on campus. The Department of Education has finalized its new rule. We're going to be going over that later today, so tune in at 4 o'clock, that's central time, so 5 Eastern. It's already posted on the stream. You can check that out. So this announcement will serve to make sure people are aware of that. Second thing is, I just want to briefly address Robert Barnes, who on Twitter contradicted my analysis of the Georgia self-defense statute, or apologize, the Georgia citizen's arrest statute. And so I want to address that. I was looking into it a little bit in, in trying to make a, a longer video about this, a formal video, but I want to respond to it timely and I haven't done enough research yet to do the longer video I want to do. So in, in the interest of combining timeliness and thoroughness, I've decided to respond with what I have so far and if I get deeper into it to respond more thoroughly, I'll do a formal video on that later. But Robert Barnes said in his analysis, and he said this on Twitter, that the way he reads the Georgia citizen's arrest statute, there is a distinction, a wholly separate, I don't wanna, I'll paraphrase it, I don't wanna quote him, so I'm gonna paraphrase it. But he says that the way the felony arrest portion is written, that it wouldn't make sense to read in the in the immediate presence or immediate knowledge element from the first section. So the statute has two sentences. The first section says you can do a citizen's arrest with immediate in your immediate presence or your immediate knowledge. That's second, sentence one. And then sentence two says you can, in the case of a felony, you can do it with probable cause. And he says, well, it wouldn't make sense to read the, the knowledge requirement from the first sentence into the second sentence. That wouldn't make sense because the second sentence talks about probable cause and probable cause is presumably a lesser standard than in your immediate knowledge or your immediate presence. Immediate knowledge or immediate presence would certainly give you probable cause, that's for sure. But his idea here is that probable cause is not necessarily that. It wouldn't necessarily require you to have immediate knowledge or, or immediate presence. Um, that probable cause could be based on some other sort of information in totality that would give you the, the requisite um, ability to conduct the arrest. And I think this is a, in, an interesting argument and a, a, a reasonable read of the statute. So I think he's reading the statute reasonably that it, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't necessarily, to his mind, make sense to impute that first part of that sentence on the second part because then the second part wouldn't make sense. So that's an interesting way to read it, and there's a lot of merit to that argument. My sort of, I think that what goes through my mind is a couple things. The way the statute is written, it's written as one continuous block. It's two sentences, and there's just one sentence after another. And so the way he's reading that, to my mind, essentially is treating it as though it were written in two separate sections or two separate subsections, like there was a subsection A, a subsection B, or in two different statutes. The way he's reading it, as I understand it, he's reading them completely independently of each other, as though they were in two different statutes or two different subsections. That, that creates a concern in me, my mind because that's not the way it's written. Now, I'm not saying that what he's saying is unreasonable, it's just what you are doing is you're divorcing it from a context where the, the legislature has not, by operation of law, created a separate context. If the legislature had one of these to be two so wholly distinct things, then they could have done section A, section B, they could have listed it in two different subsections, right? That's how you typically indicate s separate, or you could have created subclauses explicitly within the statute to, to do that explicitly to create them as, as wholly divorced concepts. But they didn't do that they wrote it as just one sentence follows another in the same statute. And, and typically when you're reading something in, in that's contemporaneous, you're reading things in light of each other. So the idea of not imputing the language, which is Robert Barnes' idea, the, that idea makes sense because he says it wouldn't make sense if you did. But I'm not sure that he's, he's right because 
to go where he's going would treat the two sentences as though they were two different subsections or two different statutes or otherwise explicitly listed as divorced from each other. And so it's not immediately obvious to my mind that it is unreasonable to read the language from the first sense on the second sense because it's language that comes before. So you're reading language that comes first onto a later section. That's typically what you do. You read things forward when you're doing that. And there's nothing from the legislature that indicates explicitly that they're separate. So I think Robert's idea that you can read them as separate is reasonable. Um, I think my initial idea that, well, maybe no, you, sh you shouldn't do that because if you did, you'd be imputing a separation that isn't explicit in the language. So I was digging into this a little bit more in terms of what the case law actually looks like. And this is where I kind of ran out of time and wanted to film a response um, because I ran out of time in, in doing my research and trying to figure out exactly what the, the contours of this is so that I could give a more thorough answer to, to Robert. But um, I don't mind that Robert contradicted me. He's, he's, a, he's a smart lawyer. His reading, I understand why he's reading it that way. Um, it just strikes me as a little, it, in the same way that what he's saying, my reading is odd because I'm imputing that first sentence restriction onto the second where it doesn't make sense. In the same way he's making that argument to me, my, my counter back to him is it doesn't fully make sense to not do that because they're in the exact same subsection without any break, without any delineation. You're treating them as separate when there's no clear marker to do so. And you, you typically read things in a, in, a, in, a, in a context. So it makes sense to read the, the, that second sentence in the context of the first. And the way he does it to treat them as wholly separated is, is slightly odd in terms of how you normally do legal construction. It might, be, it might be legally right. So I'm not saying he's legally wrong. He has an idea that is worthy of discussion and worthy of merit, but to actually analyze it properly and figure it out, I'd actually have to get into the case law. And I was doing some of that research before um, to try to give a more thorough answer and just ran out of time. I do have a day job after all. And so I, I don't have all the time to, to research all the things I want. I, I have way more stuff to cover than I, than I have time. I keep a perpetual list. I've got literally like 110 things on a perpetual list of things I might want to cover. And I just don't have time because this is not as of yet a self-sustaining thing for me to do. I'm not generating enough revenue from this to, to be this, do this full time. Um, and so I can't, I can't devote as much time. But I wanted to give a response. Yes, I saw Robert's tweets about it. Doesn't bother me that another lawyer contradicted me. He has an idea that makes sense, but it runs, it in some ways runs into exactly the same problem that he thinks I'm creating. He thinks I'm creating a problem by reading the statute from the first sentence in the second, and I think he's creating a problem by not doing that because the context suggests a relationship where his analysis suggests a, a divorce that isn't brought out by the way that text is actually written. So that's that's sort of where I'm sit, sitting on that issue at the moment. It's I think he raises a fair point, but I don't know the answer. So again, I'll be live streaming in about four hours. Um, we're going to be doing the Betsy DeVos Title IX thing. should be really exciting. So if you didn't get a notification before, you've got a notification now. Um, be back in about three and a half hours, and we'll be doing a live stream on the regular device instead of my mobile. And thanks to the $2 Super Chat. It is, as always, super appreciated. Just a quick thing. Till later, my friends. Peace. Bye.